happy dad is right there. Brought to you by. No, not for me, not for me. For yeah, yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah. You didn't fit macros? <laughs> oh, <laughs> she. Huh. It actually only has 10. It's only 10? That's kidding. cap. That's I'm hundred. just kidding. No, I was like, no way. We're at 100. We're at 100. We're at 100. Yeah. All right. We're on? For a minute. 30 seconds. All, right, All right, perfect. Oh. All right, one, two. We're back to the best and our most organic, authentic podcast in the city, in the world, in LA, a Toast to Life podcast. And for the first time, we have a trio on this podcast. So it's me, Dusko, David, and Veronica from the House of Gain. Let's give it up. <laughs> yes, sir. From the hog. From the hog. All right, let's talk about right away the hog. How did you guys come up with the name? How did you end up with the location? And what got you guys into owning a gym? Damn. Um, you know, the name, I don't even know how we found out about the name. I, I don't know why. I just, I, uh, I think that gains was like a trending word at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know where I saw that, but I was like, you know, what I think it was, it was that one guy, Robert Frank, he's that dude would sit in his car and he would like yell the, uh, the phone, like when he was taking his pre-workout and he kept saying like house of gains. I'm like, you know what? I fuck with that. <laughs> I think I'm gonna rock with that name. It's honestly like, as I obviously, I, we, I met Ariel first. She posted and tagged the gym. I'm like house of gains. I'm like, damn, that, that just sounds like you want to be there. Like if you're really about your shit, yeah. you want to be there. Mm-hmm. So the process, take us through it. Oh man! Well, start with, well I mean, I guess you got to start with college, right? Got yeah, you. yeah, got I was, you. yeah. I was, I was um, in my. So we, we first, so I opened the gym, and then Victoria and I got married. So now we're like running the gym together. So yeah. we, uh, it was 2018, 2018, and I was listening to a lot of uh, Andy Frisella, which I still listen to, and I was listening to his podcast, and it was um, my sophomore year of college, and I had a full ride scholarship. And I was like, dude, this shit is trash. Like, <laughs> like yeah. I'm, I'm you had just, a full ride scholarship for what? For like, academics. Ooh. No, for academics, yeah. So, yeah, I, I graduated like a 4 4 and I got. I he was kind of smart. <laughs> I just followed directions. Just straight up, you don't have to be smart to graduate with good grades. You just kind of follow directions. So, oh, um, and I was like, dude, like, college is trash. Like, <laughs> dude, the, the, the professors that I had, the classes that I had, like, I realized that everything was like, everyone in the class was super average. Everyone was always complaining about how much workload there was. And it's now I'm like, bro, this shit's not even hard. Like, People complain too much. Like, why is everyone complaining so much? And uh, Andy was doing his, uh, now he has the Real as Fuck podcast, but now he, before he did the MFCEO, which is all about owning a business. Yeah. And uh, it was like episode 60 something. I can already remember it. And I was driving to school one day and I, was t- I had my political science class, which by the way, I hate political science because they, yeah, they, t- they don't talk about political <laughs> science in political science class. And, um, at the end of the episode, he had said something. He was like, just stop being a fucking bitch and just do it. And I was mm. like, and he, the, the, early in the podcast, he was talking about owning a business. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to I'm gonna fucking do it. So, like, I was sitting in, in class and some girls complaining about, oh, I work 15 hours a week and I can't get good grades and I can't afford, like, gas. And I'm like, at the time, I was a manager in retail. I was working 40 hours a week during Black Friday. And then I had, like, 18 units. So I had six classes. And yeah. uh, my scholarship forced me to get straight A's. So I was, like, all A's and everything. I'm like, dude, like, I don't want to be surrounded by these people, dog. Like, if I have to work around these people when I graduate, like, I, my life's going to fucking suck. Mm-hmm. I was like, if these are the people I'm wor- like, I'm side by side with now, yeah. I need to own my own business. I can't be with these people. So um, that's when I was like, you know what? What do I love to do every single day in my life that I could see me owning a business? And I was like, well, I like working out, but I don't want to be a personal trainer. I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be like a coach, which I'm coaching now. But, like, I didn't want to be a coach at the time. <laughs> um and I was like, you know what? Like, I I liked the gym, but the, what I liked more than the gym is wherever we traveled, whether it was Sacramento, like, to visit family or, like, out of state, is I liked, like, equipment. Like, I mm. liked gym. I liked the Supported. actual, like, the atmosphere. Yeah. So a lot of people liked the gym, but, like, to me, it was, like, the machines, the specialty of each gym, the atmosphere each one has. So the or- like, you know like, the organization that every single one had, like, the environment, like, yeah. how everybody, like, even though, like, people can say, oh, every gym is the same, but, like, Whichever gym we went to, it, there was just something a little bit different. Whether if they had the same machines, the machines were placed differently. It was just like the more technicalities yeah. of it all. So, do you guys or did you guys organize? I know we're gonna jump a little bit ahead, but did mm-hmm. you guys organize your gym to where everything kind of just fits the resume of that type of workday? So, if it's a leg day, yeah, do you guys kind of? 
Hundred percent. Yeah. Because you don't want to squat here, and then you got legs and accessories all the way to the other side of the gym. Yeah. Exactly. So with you did that that transition. So we you were in academics, everything. So how did you guys end up meeting to like create that? I mean, to start a power couple, you obviously you got to start from somewhere. Meet from somewhere. Qualities of of uh, each other that you guys just gravitated. So how did that happen? How did Vettel come into the picture, or vice versa? How did well, David get into your picture? <laughs> well, to back it up a little bit, um, so we just got married October 2021. Shit, you better know. Yeah, yeah. Sure. You planned the wedding. Yeah. You planned the wedding. <laughs> um, but to back it up, um, we actually met and started dating eighth grade of junior high. Uh, so it's kind of transition. We have eighth grade sweethearts. Um, that's Everybody take, take a moment, cry a little bit. That's, exactly, that's get cute. your tissues out. No, um, <laughs> but so we went through the fin- the rest of eighth grade. We went through high school. That was, you know, a breeze. Um, college, he well, he was at Cal State Channel Islands. I went to UC Irvine. Mm. Um, so that was kind of like a little separation for us. Um, we didn't separate as like a couple, but it was just so different because we just weren't together. Yeah, you know? we're living yeah. separately. So we had a little moment of like just living separately. Um, things didn't work out for me in Irvine. So then I came back, um, 2017 and then I actually started working at the boys and girls club. Um, Mm. I loved working with kids. My bachelor's in psychology. Um, so kids for me was just like a thing, right? Yeah. Um, fast forward a little bit after working with kids for a few years, right after we got married, um, we decided that it was just time for me to kind of hop on board with like the gym aspect. Um, and just now I'm like full time at the gym. Um, but in terms of just kind of supporting him and like doing the gym, it was a big thing because at the time, like his parents didn't really like see it. And I was like, look, if you want to do it, like, let's do it. And it was kind of in the transition where I was coming back from Irvine. He was like, let me take a break off of school. Let me take a whole year off. Um, and that was kind of a big thing, especially for the scholarship, because it's never happened before. Like, why would a student who has a scholarship take take a a year off of school? You know, it was unheard of. Nice. Um, so it was just more of like, okay, well, I supported you. We support each other through high school, and this is just the next step. So fuck it, let's just do it. Yes, yeah, so the gym was already open two years before she came on, like as an employee. Mm-hmm. So oh. like she was just, she'd be there like maybe like a couple hours a day because yeah. I was basically there all day long. And then, but now she's like full time. So was it more like you still had to write your own story and fulfill certain things in your life before exactly. you completely yeah. hopped on over here? Exactly, hundred percent. So. I mean, with the whole, you said it, you guys said earlier, you went to Irvine, you were at Channel Islands. So uh, our resume is, uh, we have a lot of uh, young viewers and, and viewers that are now in their 20s that when they were graduating in high school, they don't leave their certain place because of their significant other. That's a big one. So mm-hmm. I, I want to ask for those viewers that maybe now regretting it, not leaving and now because they're not with that person. Yeah. How did you guys come up with that decision as a couple? Like, hey, I'm going to travel 100 miles away from you and you're going to be here and yet this is still going to work. It was, uh, it was definitely a financial thing. Uh, financial yeah. aid, Facts. what gave the best scholarships, what had the best program. Um, at the time, Irvine had a really good program for teaching and schooling and, like I said, working with kids. And yeah. at the time, that was, like, my passion. I really wanted to do it. It was for you. Um, so it was for me. So at the time, it, it lined up. Everything matched. The financial aid package was great, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know. So we just kind of was like, okay, well, if it works, this works for you, then you got to stay here. And if this works for me, I got to go there, you know. Yeah. And if we just kind of I think, I think people are tripping, dude. People think of, like, relationships is it's all emotion. And I'm like, no, bro, like, it has to be financial. It has to make logical sense. Like, so, if so you can separate, yeah, if you can separate logic from emotion, like, you'll be, you'll be set forever, dude. Like, that's what you have to do. So, yeah. like, logically, it made sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. it was like, yo, like, you save money. I have a full ride. Like, I mean, we're going to be. And, and we made it work because while I was out there, you know, I would take the train back over here and he'd, like, visit there, like, once in a blue moon. But it was easier for me to come this way. So, you know. <laughs> put me on blast. <laughs> put him on blast. Yeah, put me on blast. But so we was, made it work. But was that difficult? Him once in a blue moon coming and see his love of his life? No. No, because she was coming up, like, every weekend. So she would just come visit us. It's like, I don't know. Like, UC Irvine was cool and all. But, like, I don't know, dude. We got, I got stuck on a floor at, at where we lived at CI and. We just had some some down ass people, so she would just come up and visit me a lot because yeah. we had some really, we had some cool people that we ended up keeping lifelong friends with so far. So so transitioning into marriage, how did the marriage part come up? Because I mean, I'm going to speak for it. Like marriage for me is like all right. I feel like there has to be a right time. Maybe I'm wrong, but there are some people that when they graduate high school, they get married. 
Within a year or two, they get yeah. married, and within a, another year or two, they're divorced. Yeah. So how did giving us a gem for um, each other, how did marriage work? What's the idea of marriage? Like, how do you make that into a unison? Oh, man. You want to drop, drop the mic on this one? <laughs> well, well first, first off, the statistic is that business, uh, uh, people in, in marriage, uh, um, who are in marriage who have a business, 60% less divorce rate than people who don't. So if, if you're married and own a business, you're 60% less likely to be divorced. Because you can imagine, like, you're in it to win it together. Correct. But that wasn't like a, hey, dude, like, we had to get married because, you know, we owned a business. It wasn't like that. <laughs> no, not at um, all. No, we, we actually, uh, we opened the gym in 2019. The week before we opened, her dad passed away. And then the week after, we were like, the business is open. We were like, dude, like. We were already together for, like, eight we and a half, nine yeah, years. Like eight years. <laughs> and so we were like, all right, like, when, I know, like, for me and for her, when we set a goal to do something, like, we fucking do it. Like, we take 100% and do it. Yeah. So like, uh, we don't speak it out there until we get, like, I would, we didn't announce the gym until we were already a year and a half into it because we didn't want people to be like, we announced it and then it didn't happen. Yeah. So we were like, all right, in our relationship, we're like, if we're going to make this last, like this is a hundred percent, like we got to be all in. Right. So we were already all in for eight years. And then, so when we opened the business, we're like, all right, well, we own a business now. Like. We've already been there for eight years. Like, what's the next step? Like, well, at that point, we were already committed. You know, yeah. We're like, well, yeah. then it's time to it's time to get married. So, uh, funny story is, it was the week after we had opened, and uh, I was like, all right, well, we got to get engaged. And she was like, all right, cool. So I was like, mm -hmm. I'm I'm a di I'm different than most people. So I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna get down on one knee. I'm like, just go pick out whatever ring you, you want. You increase the shoes. Like, well, yeah, I can increase the <laughs> shoes, bro. I got the, the one lows on. So uh, I was actually I told her I was like, look, um, so you could either have like a two thousand dollar engagement ring, or we could buy a new bench press. And I was like, legit. And like then that, I was like, was, and then I was like, but um, yeah. but I was like, here's my credit card statement. I already bought the bench press, so like, you get <laughs> so, like, a, see, I thought I had an option, but I did not have. So an option. I was like, you get a you get a five hundred dollar ring. So she, but it paid off. I was like, trust me, the return on investment, like, and sure enough, dude, we had people that were signing up for the membership it was only because we had that bench press. So I was like, the return on investment. Once again, it's it's not emotions, it's logic. So mm. like, logically, it made more sense to get the bench press now. And get the nicer ring later. And now you see the ring she has on now. She's a very lucky lady. Is it heavy? So, um, oh, it's so this one was the first one. Okay. Yeah, that it's little still one. Nice. Little one. Little, little five hundred dollar ring. I yeah. picked it out and then came this one right here that I got a custom made. Yeah. So, so she know. needs insurance well, on that one. But can <laughs> yeah. see, can see. So you know, I would say it's a definitely a upgrade for so sure. So do you yeah. bench now with the ring? Huh. Honestly, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I I, I, that. I think that it's it's all like going back to like the marriage and, and owning a business. I think it's you have to be a hundred percent to go forward with it. Like you have, it's there's no doubt. I feel like when people get like at our age, people get married now, and they always have like an escape plan. Like there's always like a like not a, a backup, but like there's there was always a doubt in their mind. Like yeah, if it doesn't work out, it's not that big of a deal. But like when you when you create businesses together or whatever it is outside of your relationship, it like yeah. only makes it like tighter. So what would Giving us, uh, you said, uh, you guys are open to all the topics, so mm -hmm. give us, uh, for being business owners and being in business together as a married couple, what was the hardest moment that you guys had to go through that you guys probably like, fuck? Um, I, think, I think it relates to business in general. I think people underestimate how fucking hard it is to own a, like a brick and mortar business, or just any business. I shouldn't say just brick and mortar, but a business. Yeah. And so it's like the... The supporting role, like I said, I opened it, and so I, w I was working about 20 hours a day. So I'd wake up at 4.30, and then I'd open the gym at 5.36 um, in the morning, and then I would close the gym at midnight. Mm -hmm. So, like, I would be there. So I would wake up at 4.30, she'd be asleep, and I'd go home. She'd already be asleep. Yeah. So like, I only saw her for about, like, an hour and a half, two hours a day. Like a high and by. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Good morning, good night. So I think that, like, you have to understand Dylan. supporting. You have to understand supporting roles. Um, so you have to understand supporting roles in a relationship and in a business. That's like, that's pretty big. Right. Hold on. Knock, knock. We're on. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome into it. it. Welcome into it. Hi. How's it going? Live audience always on the podcast. So. <laughs> Down for that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's tough. Yeah. Say, it was definitely, say it good was morning, definitely say good night sacrifices and, that we had to make. Sacrifices, yeah. compromises, and just communication. I would say were the three biggest things that that played into business and then the relationship as a whole. So now transitioning into your full time now at the gym. Mm -hmm. So how does that work now? Because usually, I mean, the stigma that, I mean, I probably 
friends and just the social media in general, like they always say, you can't work with your spouse. You can't work with your boyfriend or girlfriend because it doesn't be work. Keep it tripping, bro. Keep it tripping. <laughs> it, it's true to, to a certain extent. So when I, first, when I came on, like, completely, I told yeah. them, I said, look, I was like, I need to make a schedule. I was like, it's not going to be I'm here all the time. It's not going to be you're here all the time with me. Like, we need to have a set schedule, set boundaries for yeah. us because as a, as a couple, we still need that separation because then it comes to the point where you get, like, cabin fever with the other person. It's like there's no space. Like, yeah. I was like, I need to be able to feel like I can control some aspects of the business and you, are, um, you have enough trust in me to do so. And vice versa, like, I know I don't have to be there at the business to hold your hand, like, and support you even, because I know you're doing it, you know? Yeah. So. Was, was it hard for you to, like, let go of the reins from being there basically 24-7 and I, controlling I, everything? I think that uh, the biggest part about owning a successful business is leadership. And so you, in leadership, you have to learn how to, um, like, trust and delegate um, other Delegate. responsibilities to someone. So, like, whether it was her or if I hired Joe Schmo off the street, doesn't matter. Like, you have to um, give them the opportunity to learn and to fuck up and to, like, to make decisions. Like, yesterday, yeah. the, someone came in and they got a month pass and she was like, fuck, I forgot to tell them about the 24-hour access. Like, what do I do? And then instead of being like, okay, I got this, I was like, what, what would you do? And she was like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, so what are you going to do about it? Like, you have, mm-hmm. you, you have to put them, throw them in situations where yeah. they, can, they can take hold of things. Yeah, for so sure. So it's like, hey, like, instead of, hey, don't call me, like, just figure it out. Like, I trust your intuition to do it. And, like, even, like, right now, my mom's at the gym. She takes over the gym when we're not there. And uh, I even tell my mom, like, dude, figure it out. Like, like, I trust you. Like, you raised me or we're married for a reason. Like, you have the Thanks. qualities and trust to do the things that I, I trust you're going to do. So, it's leadership. A lot of people have a hard time giving up leadership. I think it's, yeah, I think for the last two, three weeks, that word delegate has been a big thing because, and we said it, I've said it before, like, when you're a control freak, you just want to be in control of everything. Yeah. Like, hey, if you, if you fucked up in that, like, fuck, get out the way. I got this. But it's like, if you keep doing that, how is a business going to grow when you're exactly. trying to do the whole thing exactly. by yourself? And actually, my uncle had told me, He's like, look, if you do one thing and you're great at it, you can only do so much. But if you have four or five other people can, that can do the same thing in a certain way to a certain extent like you, you're going to grow. Yeah, I, th- I think the hardest part is, is understanding those four or five people don't start out like that, though. Yeah. So, like, a lot of people have a hard time when they hire someone or when they bring someone on and they make that first fuck up. Facts. It's always like, fuck, dude, I didn't make the right decision. I shouldn't have brought this person on. They don't know what they're doing. But at the end of the day, like, if, let's just say we weren't married and she was, like, a regular employee, right? Like, if I fired her or I tried to find someone to replace her, well, that next person is going to make the same fuck up. Yeah. So if you just let her stay on, she's going to learn from that mistake. But you have to be able to have the leadership to be like, hey, this is where you fucked up. Like, yeah. let me teach you how to do it correctly instead of just being like, all right, well, let me just do it. You yes. know? You have to give them the responsibilities to make the, to make the wrong decisions yeah. so that they can learn to make the right decisions. That's, Damn. like, big. That's huge. That is yeah. huge. So <clears throat> with, you said you didn't tell people you opened the gym for like a year and a half. Yeah, we kept it under wraps. So how did you guys, if you don't mind us asking or putting it you out throw there. Throw whatever you want out there. So how'd you stay afloat if you didn't promote it? So well, the business wasn't open yet. So like a lot of people don't understand like the back end of deals. So like we had to. Please explain to us. Yeah, we so like, no clue. I'll just go straight to January 2018. That was the day where I was like, I was sitting in class. I'm like, I'm not going to do this shit no more. And like literally I was in class and I was like, all right, cool. So like let me figure out what, what's the first step of owning a gym. I was like, well, equipment, like I have to figure it out. Yeah. And it's the snowball effect is you have to find the quotes for the equipment and then you have to find a location and then you have to try to think about all the things you're gonna need, front desk, computers, lights, everything, right? So you, nice. so you get this huge cost estimate sheet that way you know what you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. So that took six months and then like took another couple months to find a space and then it took a couple months to convince the least person to even fucking talk to me because I was 19. Oh, yeah. And they were like, you're tripping, dude. Like, Wait, how old are you guys? Uh, 23. Wait, 23. Yeah. Oh, give it up, bro. No, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes. Hell yeah. yeah. So like I would, I would uh, both her and I, like we always got compliments from our teachers in school when we shoot them emails about issues and stuff because they were like, you guys are very well spoken. So like I would email people about leases and uh, they'd be like, yeah, cool, blah, 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 whatever. I like, come meet me and I meet. And then they would be like real cool with me, like on the front end. And then after I met them, bam, they just 86 me. They, would, they wouldn't answer my calls. They blocked my, my number. But they, they took would, them as a joke. They took me as a joke. Like this kid, like he's just uh, fucking with us. Like no way. I think, fuck, having the 18, 19 year old coming and knowing their business, 
I mean, I think for older people, when they're, what, 40, 50, being an owner or whatever, they look at a young guy like, fuck, he doesn't know what the fuck he's yeah, doing. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And it's, it's one of those things, I posted a video, it was on my, one of my reels, or, or it was on a story, and I was talking about, like, I don't, you, can, you look back, you can't blame them, because, like, I yeah. didn't have any track record to show for it. It's like if you went to a home, you're like, hey, bro, I'm going to I'm gonna build this Lamborghini. Like, bro, you don't know anything about cars, bro. You're, you're Honda. Like, you, don't, you, <laughs> like you, haven't, you haven't even built, a, like, a, like, a Toys R Us car, bro. Like, how are you going to build a Lamborghini? But you, you be, and it's because, like, we had no track record to show that we knew how to own a gym, you know? So I can't blame them for it, you know? Yeah, you just had, like, basically your vision and, and your dream that, yo, I figured this out. I know these numbers and how to do this. But at the end of the day is how you said, the track record. Yeah. Well, what other gym did you open and stuff like that? But exactly. So they denied you. Yeah, so they denied me. And then no realtor wanted to work with me for the same reason. So, like, I had to go out and I found my own space and uh, I found my spot. And then we got into lease negotiations and they wouldn't talk to me. They were like, don't talk. They are like, dude, I swear, I have the email saved. Just, I have it favorited on my uh, you should, email you box. put them on your fucking, on the and, wall. Uh, no, I, I'm trying to keep a good relationship because they do come check on me. So I don't want them to know I'm roasting them. But uh, uh, the email was, the, I swear to God, the email, I was after the first meeting and he, and he was like, hey, if, we, if you want to work with us, like, uh, I need to see your parents' financials. And I was like, damn, like, you, like, that's what you, all you care about? Like. Yeah. But it, it, once again, it's a retrospect. Like they needed to know that it made they, sense. that their investment wasn't going to go under. You know, sure. at the end um, of the day, they're a business too. So, so, but I didn't send them my parents' financials, and so what? All I did was I would write out an email and I would copy and paste it. I send it to my dad and be like, all right, email him this, and then he would email the guy my exact words, and then he email my dad back, and then I would make the response, give it to my dad, and then he would do that. So like that's basically how it worked. As I I had to channel it through my dad because he trusted <laughs> my dad. He didn't trust me. No, but if so, he didn't do that. House of Games wouldn't be where it's at, right? No, well, that's the thing is that, like, people people think, like, like you think of Amazon, right? Like, Jeff Bezos, he borrowed $250,000 from his parents, right? Yeah. But no one ever talks about him being, like, oh, he had help, he had help. Like, everyone wants to be, like, self-made. But, like, no, bro, as a business owner, you have to learn to be resourceful. For sure. Like, you have to leverage, whether it's borrowing money or, or using your parents to send emails. Like, you have to leverage things. Yeah. And so people forget that you have to be resourceful. And so, like, that's all it is. I, I feel just like use my resources around me. Everybody wants to be, how you said, self-made. Everybody wants to be, like, nah, I did this shit on my own. It's like, you could do it to, to an extent. To an extent. You, like, could, you, you have to have a team. Like, you yeah. have got to. to. Got yeah. to. Obviously. Yeah. Like, you got to. Why exactly. we're you at where we're team. at. Because it was the same thing. And this is when we moved from Fontana. I mean, we were just recording in our, in our house. I told Dylan. I told Cindy. Um, I'm like, yo, we're going to have to move this to L.A. Told my girlfriend, I'm like, hey, I know it's, we're going to invest a little bit. We're going to get some time away from each other, but I got to go do this. Yeah. She's like, are you sure? And I'm like, trust me, it's going to work. And yeah, I mean, we're sitting here. This is now seven, seven months, I believe. Right? Something That's like dope. that. Seven months now out here That's in LA. Dope. So when people ask like, yo, like we started this shit in West Covina in our apartment at 11 11 p.m. all the way to 2, 3 in the morning. Oh, wow. Gone, huh? That's dope. <laughs> no, no idea of, of how to do a podcast, how to video edit, no, nothing. So Love that. when we started, I mean, I had no control of, like, the conversation where we would get drunk. Take a nap. 2 in the morning, wake up. I'm like, fuck, I got to edit this. I got to get ready. Yeah. Boom. And people really don't didn't see it. But me, my girlfriend, our couple-month-year-old son was in the room asleep. We went 25 episodes That's so every sweet. fucking Friday. That's dope. So I'm like, all right, now we got to delegate. Now we got to move on. Now we got to figure out how, how to make this pay off. And, yo, like, honestly, the messages and the people that, that it reaches, that's what, for me, it pays off. And the people that we meet, like, we met Ariel. I met Aubrey. You know, Diana that's sitting here now. We met her through the page. And now you guys that literally, I mean... Change my words if I'm wrong, but you guys are the goats of Oxnard with House of Games. I would I wouldn't say that, bro. No, there's, there's, not yet. No. Not yet. No. No. Top no. dogs, top three. I, we let we let all of our customers let our members speak for us, but we don't we don't we've never put out there that we're like the best chairman or we're like the best business. Like you just let everyone else speak for so you. So what would you say? Jumping right into it, picking back what I just said, what makes your gym different? It's the environment. We've yeah. been to plenty of gyms that it's like you go back to another like corporate gym or, you know, we like 
like you know that's a, that's a standard is that you go back to a corporate gym and you go back to ours and it's like it just can't compare you can't compare it like yeah. you literally cannot because it's just totally different and even the people there like the same people that we would because we do have some members that would go to 24 hour with us when we were at 24 and from them being at 24 to them being at our gym just totally different yeah yeah, yeah, you have to you have to put your customers at the forefront of your business, dude. And just yeah. not enough people do that. Well, I read your bio it says basically your customers are your members are your main priority. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you think about it. People lose this, and and retail people. Uh, I worked with people who had a hard time with this when I when I was a manager in retail. Is that there was a couple hard headed guys that I worked with, and and they wouldn't treat customers that well. I'd be like, remember who pays your paycheck? Like, well, That's, I worked yeah. at Lids. It was Lids Sports Group, and it was a sports store, and they were like. Well, Lids pays my 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 uh, my paycheck. I'm like, no, bro. Like that customer pays your paycheck. Like they yeah. give the revenue to your business and then they pay you out. So I think people forget that. Like when a customer says, like, oh, thank you guys, we appreciate you. I'm like, no, like we appreciate you <laughs> yeah. for letting us, us to be able to do this because yeah. you have to remember your customers are what pays your bills, pays your rent, pays your expenses. Like those are the ones keep you afloat. And yeah. I think uh, honestly, the only other gym couple that I know, shout out Mission Fitness and. La Habra, is that word. the uh, the orange and black gym? That yeah. I've never been there before. We have a couple of members who have moved there. I heard it's dope. I heard Mission it's really Fitness cool. is is legit, bro. Like, uh, yeah, they're power couple. They're husband, wife, kids are on there too. Like, they're that's dope. That's think, dope. Uh, their youngest, their youngest kid had less than ten years old, and he runs it like he's the owner. That's dope. He runs it like he'll see. Uh, I don't. They have turf, so it says on there no backpacks, no no metal weights. They put it on there. He comes right. Do you not read the sign? Love that. <laughs> like, Love that. There is like a rubber band stuck on the pull up. And I was like, well, I'm going to get it. I got it. Okay. My That's bad, dope. bro. My bad. That's dope. But that was one of them that, yo, he gave me this. Like, it was one time where I was at the gym late. It was just him. He has a, what did he drive? His GT350. Sick ass fucking Mustang. Yeah. But he was just telling us like how him and his wife started personal training. He moved into a little warehouse, started yep. there. He's like, we've only had this two, three years, and we built it. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, like, I don't mind. I think their fee is, like, 70 bucks. Yeah. Compared to a, a 24-hour pay, like, what, 30 minimum, yeah. 40, 50? Yeah, ours is 60, yeah. And I'm like, bro, you're, everything you're paying at this is well worth it. Yeah. First time getting kilo place, and it killed me. <laughs> we're, get, we're getting them in uh, in a couple of months, so I feel that. Fuck, yeah. it was a reality check going yeah. into kilo plates, yep. but I mean that that type of uh, atmosphere, and people forget like when you go into those type of gyms, like your guys' type of gyms, people that are there are just serious. Like, yeah, yeah they have fun and everything, but if you're paying X amount of money to be in those type of gyms, it's because yo, this you love this. Yeah. You love this. So I'm sure the, I think you guys have a board of PRs? We do. We do. We have, have a PR, PR wall. wall. Yeah, PR wall. Are you, is Ariel, you're on there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> yeah, huh. yeah our, right next to our, our dog, does. our little dog has her little paw on there. She's right next to Gracie. Oh, Gracie shit. loves Ariel. Jesus. And he really slaps the shit out of him every time. Like, but before he benches, like, like slap me, he slaps him. Yo, dude, before, before we were to go to the gym with my other boys, it's like, this dude's like 350, almost like four, bro. You ready? Yeah, deadlift. Two hands. That's, just, that's what they do yeah. to, to their brothers. Oh. They, he slaps him on the back twice. He's like, nah, turns around, fucking slaps the shit out of him in the face. We're at the gym at the front desk. And then we're we like, have to, like, dude. Like, oh, my God. I, I've been trying to get uh, my boy Chris from, he used to be in Strength Cartel. Mm. Um... And every time he just spits in his hand, uh, puts the shirt down, just oh, boom. Damn. Oh. I think his video actually even got taken went down viral? from TikTok. Oh, shit. Yeah, because it was like excessive violence. <laughs> boom. <laughs> we, want, we want raw, homie. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> we're going to throw the mics at them. So you're good. You're good. You're good. Are we good? No, no. It's a, it's a lively audience. It, it's a live lively audience. audience. I like the live audience. <laughs> they're, they're all, we're all talking. But so I want individually you, Rado. Throw some shade, dog. Oh. <laughs> Throw some shade. I was going to say, give us the best advice for the young, the young generation. <laughs> um, I have Best advice just in general or? For life. Okay. Best Start best. off with life. Best advice for life is... Just be yourself 
and just be willing to communicate like you and what you like so when you're being yourself you want to be able to communicate that right you want to be able to communicate what your boundaries are you don't want to let any you don't want to like how do I want to say it you don't want to I don't want to say give in for somebody else but don't 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 lose your values for somebody else's like wants right so just stay true to yourself and just be able to communicate that because if you don't then how is somebody gonna know like what you do and what you don't want to do you know so i'd say just life advice just fucking be yourself guys i like that i like that (laughs) give it up give it up up. all right david let's go um, I'm gonna get real. I like to talk about things that people don't like to talk about. Please, and, um, please do. We're ready. We got the tea ready. Are we allowed to cuss? Are we allowed to cuss? Uh, or yes or no? Are we allowed yeah. to? <laughs> hey, this, I said it at the beginning. This is the most authentic podcast. Uh, I'm gonna be we honest with you. I think, you that, I think that people are just a bunch of pussies, dude. Cool. I honestly really <laughs> think so. Like, like I think that people, uh, people try to. Um, I wouldn't even say sugarcoat, dude. I think that people try to avoid hard situations, yeah. and they cover that up with. Um, uh, love yourself and uh, you should be happy like but those are the situations like when you're in the dirt like you're depressed like those are the situations where you find the most uh like that's where you learn the most about yourself where you can um when you get out of those situations when you learn how to sulk in your emotions and understand like damn like this really sucks yeah. like i feel like being like oh no i'm just gonna be a happy person like i'm not gonna worry about things like no motherfucker like you gotta go to work like you like you have to get out of those situations yeah. like you have to learn to go through those um so i would just say like when everyone says like be happy and like uh like oh don't work somewhere that makes you unhappy or you know this and that like like dude you have to learn like dude that's everyone's life like you have to go through those situations so uh stop trying to avoid the hard shit like Facts. go through it like you have to go through that hard shit yeah i feel like when especially when people are like oh i'm not going to go to work cuz i don't feel good like Fuck, you don't want to go, you don't, need, you don't have bills? Yeah. You can just sit at home and do nothing and be yeah. worse and get into your feelings. So how you said, people avoid it. I think that's that's a problem that everybody is having, that something gets hard, oh, fuck, never mind, I don't want to do this. Exactly. Yeah, or, or they, they, they cover it up with, oh, I just wasn't meant to be, you know? Facts. Like, oh, it's yep. just, you know, it just wasn't supposed to happen like that. Or, yep. or, or the worst one, it is what it is. Like, no, motherfucker. <laughs> like, change that, dude. Change that. Like, what do you it mean it is what it is? That. Like, yeah. everything, once again, it's emotional from logical, dude. Everything is a reaction. Like, there's a reaction because something else happened. Like, Facts. Right? So, if you put yourself in a bad situation, uh, that's why you see people, like, you have those friends who are like, oh, my car broke down, and then this happened, and then my dog got out, and then I lost my job. Like, bro. Like, you're putting yourself in situations because you're surrounding yourself by things that are causing that. Right. So, like, you need to learn how to... It's like what, what she said. It's like set boundaries. Like, you need to learn how to, like... Like, I had, uh, I had like, a buddy hit me up for a favor, and I'm like, bro, I can't do that. I'm sorry. And he and, and it wasn't like... He, he wasn't upset about it, but, like, I have to set that boundaries with them. Yeah. Because if you don't, then the situations get out of hand, and then you get put in those worst situations. You, think, so, you feel like when people ask you for favors and you just say yes, 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 people start taking advantage? Yeah, yeah 100%. 100%. So yeah. being transitioning into being a business owner, so how, did, how has that changed? Like, I feel like when someone does something, everybody, because they've known you, they don't even fuck with you anymore. They just know you she, from back then. Yo, uh, can I get in? Can I get a free day pass? She's probably this? heard this saying in the last last month and a half, probably like fucking 12 times a day I've told people. Because like we have a lot of business owners that come to our gym. Yeah. There's one cool thing about fitness is that all successful people are somehow involved in fitness and physical mm-hmm. exercise. And so uh, I drop free game. Like if you're in my very close circle, like I'm going to do whatever I can to help you. Facts. Um, and so I always tell people like I think one of the most important lessons in business is the difference, it's a saying, is the difference between a successful business and a failing business is the amount of hard conversations you're willing to have. So, like, I don't care if you're 35, 40 years old, if you're four times bigger than me, you can squat, bench, deadlift nine times what I can, you can break me in half. I'm going to go up to you and be like, bro, you can't fucking put your hands in the mirror. Like, bro, you can't fucking drop the weight like that. Yeah. Like, bro, you can't, you can't lean the weights against the wall. You can't take advantage of, you know, fucking around at the gym. Like, I don't care. Like, I've, dude, I've told people who come to the gym before and they want to sign up. I'm like, no. Like, well, why not? I'm like, I'm going to be straight with you, bro. People don't like you here. Like, and, and they get kind of like, and I tell them, like, this is a personal, like, this is not personal. This is 100% business. But, like, if you're weak and you're not able to set those boundaries and then it leads to them, then they break something and then they want they sneak their friends in and then they, because they're taking advantage of They take advantage of the situations yeah. that they think they can take advantage of. Yeah. But that's honestly 
you're probably the first one that I've ever heard that says no. Yeah. Like, you're not coming in because I feel like you just said right now because people don't like it here. You're protecting your environment. Exactly. Yeah, dude, that's, that's the biggest that's thing. That's exactly what it was. It's really hard to protect your environment. we uh, only been one time where two guys almost got into a fight, and one dude's way fucking bigger than I am. He's huge. And the other guy, he's a smaller dude, but they got into a fight over a machine. And I have to pull these foods aside. One's 35, 40 years old. The other guy's like, I don't know, 25, 30. Both older than me. One's twice my age. And I have to pull these guys aside and say, what the fuck's wrong with you? Like, in front of everyone. Everyone's staring at me. I'm like, this is your name. This is your name. Shake hands. Get the fuck over it. Because I don't have time for this in my environment. Like, we've created something Facts. here. But, like, if you, most people would just be like, oh, man, like, I don't have the balls to say something to like, these guys. Like, just let them hash like, it out. Just like, let yeah, them yeah. hash it out. I know, but, like, you like go it is to, what it is. You do it <laughs> exactly. right then and there. Yeah, you have to take care of the situations. Because if not, like, I'll call anybody out for not racking their weights. I've called, mm. I've banned grandmas from our gym before for bringing in their granddaughters at night. Like, because we're a 24 hour gym, like, mission as I believe they are. Are they nah, 24 hours? I changed it. Hey, I'm sorry, bro. I but, um, <laughs> Mission Fitness, we still love you. But, but um, I think they don't have the, like, the sensors, like, um, Hidden strength, right? It has a sensor to key to get in. See, see, we see we have key fobs, but I just go through my twenty four. I, I go through the security checks every day, and I check my check ins. I look at the front door security camera. I make sure who comes in, right? Yeah. So I've had like grandmas before bringing like their granddaughters, and I call them, be like, "All right, bro, your membership's canceled." And they're like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, uh, "Not my fault. You didn't pay attention when I told you to pay attention. We went over our terms and conditions. Like, I'm sorry, just the way it is. You could have brought in a serial killer. I don't know who that person is. Yeah. And they go, oh, "Well, I, I didn't know. I'm like, sorry. Like, I've been a, like." You just have to you have to nip it in the butt right away. So do you think because you you are that way and you're protecting your environment, people just respect 100 your gym and you guys yep. as, as a team now? 100 percent since you started. Yeah, shit. Yeah. Honestly, that's the best thing that I've honestly heard all week is protecting your environment at all costs. Yep. Because I feel like if you let anybody just ruin that vibe, that environment that you're building from the startup. Like it's gonna end up failing at one point because yeah. you got nothing to stand up for, and and it, and it doesn't it doesn't just go with business; it goes with like life, life. like everything. Like yes. we've had situations. We had one like in the last what year and a half year, and I won't say anything like about who they are or what the situation was with no, her no, and for I. Sure. But uh, yeah, we lost like a, a really really good friend of ours yeah. to something that happened, um, and it was a disappointing situation. But like the next day, it was like, sorry, bro, that's it. Like we were we were like. What we 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 were called best friends or whatever it is, but yeah. there was a line that was crossed, a boundary that was crossed, yeah. and it was like, bro, like it's like I told you, my moral code, dude, I've done it with my dad before. Like your moral code, once you break that moral code, I don't care if you're my wife, if you're my mom, my dad, my best friend, you break that moral code, that's it. Like that's that's and, just and how that it has piggy, to be. That piggybacks off of what I was like trying to get at too is that again, you you fold, you've crossed that boundary, yeah, right? That boundary is not sent. Then yeah. now you're not yourself, right? Like, because you already lost that. Like, if he were to have said, you know, it's okay, what happened, happened. Now he just, like, let his moral codes come all the way down yeah. to where they weren't originally were at. Just yep. to, just to uh, please somebody else. Exactly. Yeah. I, I said it this week, too. Like, the room that you walk into, you want to be loving and embraced and not tolerated and talked about as soon as you turn around. And I think yep. that just, that falls into the friend group that you have. Like, we can sit at a table, all of us together, yet half of us don't even like each other. Or go to other people and talk about them. Like, yo, like, did you hear about... Like, fuck, they don't get it. But it's like, bro, if you're going to talk bad about them, why can't you just do it to their face? Exactly. Percent. Let, let them know how you feel. There's one thing about us, dude, is that like every member at our gym, all of our friends know that whatever we tell them to their face, like it's 100% true. Yeah. Like, we, we will not talk behind your back. If we, I got best friends who own businesses, and if they do something, I'm like, and I'll, I'll, I'll send them a text message, I'll call them right away, but like, hey, bro, I think what you did was wrong. Like, I'll, and, and most of the time, like, oh, shit. But, like, I, bro, I'm not going to be yes, man, in your in your, in your life. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be like, yeah, bro, like, fuck yeah, I do that. Like, no, dude, if that's a bad decision you made, yeah. like, I'm going to tell you it's a bad decision. Yeah, so, I, I think that someone had told me, too, like, dude, every time I tell you something, you'll just tell me the shit that I don't want to hear. I'm like, well, I'm just telling you what I feel and what I think maybe mm -hmm. how you should, like, go about it. But uh, Cindy said it, like, there's a lot of people that ask for advice, yet they're not ready to take it either way. Yeah. So they're going to tell you their problems, 10, 10, 20, 30 problems that they have, but yet they're not telling you that one fucking solution to do it. Yeah. So it's like, well, whenever you're ready, tell me. But until then, like, you're the type of people that I want to stay away from because what is it? If you're in a, if you have four friends that are millionaires, you'll be that fifth. And if you have fucking four complainers, you'll really be that fifth. Mm -hmm. People, people, they confuse honesty with being a dickhead, dude. And it's mm -hmm. not like that or being an asshole. And that's just not how it is. Like if, if my buddies want to go out drinking, like, I'll tell them, like, oh, I'm cool. 
like, oh, come on, Fig, let's go drink. I'm like, no, I'm good, dude. Well, why don't you want to go? I'm like, I'm going to be straight with you guys. You're wasting money. You're not getting any value out of doing that. And I just don't want to be around you guys. Like, yeah. oh, damn. Like, and then at that point, it's like, oh, you're like. You changed. It's, yeah, it, it, not even <laughs> you changed. It's like, oh, it's, man, you're an asshole. It's like, no, nah, bro. Like, what, what benefit is going out and doing those things, providing for me? What's providing for you guys? So talk about that. Like, how did, how did you transition into that? You guys are 23 years old. You know, how we've, I've said it before in the podcast. Usually people say those are your prime years to go out. There's people still fucking in 30, like, yo, let's go spend a thousand dollars at the club buying thirty dollars to rock bottles. It's it's dude, I, I I bring it back to this logic versus emotion, dude. Like you have to look on paper. I I, I have a guy who he's uh I consider him really good friends, a mentor of mine. It's it's all about it's logic. Like when yeah. you look at the pen and paper and you look at numbers, how this is gonna benefit you versus what you emotionally want, yeah. you just have to understand that it's just not worth it. Like, my time is not worth going out doing those things when I could be at home working on something for the business or her and I could be doing something together. Like, it's it's all a logic versus emotional thing, dude. So how did that transition with, like, the friend group you guys had? Or is, has it always been that standard that you guys set? Um, it, for the most part, it's kind of been a standard. But, I mean, we do we have seen, like, transitions. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be like, oh, like, nobody invites us places. But, you know, there is a transition where it's like, oh, like, we can't go out on a Friday night, like at seven or six o'clock for dinner because we're at the gym until eight o'clock at night. And sometimes it's even later, depending on what we have to do. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there is transitions. And again, it's just the whole sacrifices. But at the end of, at the end of the day, it's like we know what our goal is. So that's that's enough for us. You know, yeah. like yeah. We're, we're OK to like not go out, spend money like that we don't need to yeah. on like shitty pizza or, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, yeah. like at the end of the day, like we are doing what we know we want to get done so that in the future we have what we want. Yep. No, that, honestly, I think you guys, you just said it best. Like you, it works for you guys. This mm -hmm. what benefits us. Like it doesn't need to benefit you as long as it benefits me and I'm good with it. And it's like in your guys' case, like it benefits me and my partner. It, it's perfect. Yep. Others are not going to agree. Why? Because I feel like other people, they're just not in that in that right mind space. Like, yo, if you want to go spend, what is it, like 400 bucks on a $30 to rock bottle, go ahead. I you, can do it. People live a fake life, bro. <laughs> oh, people live, like, we see it firsthand, like, at our facility. And I'm not saying we have these members anymore, but if you feel that this is attacking you, then this might, might be one of you. The shoe fits. Um, at this point, dog, <laughs> like, it is. We, got, we, have members, we have members that will... Uh, dude, they'll be on IG, like, I do this, I work this many hours, I was grinding, whatever, like, they post these things, and I'm like, hey, bro, like, uh, your card got declined this month for your membership, and uh, our it membership happens. is membership is $42, and, and trust me, I'm not here to knock anyone's work, because if they're struggling financially, I understand that's the way, have, that's the way we can freeze your membership, we do these things, right, and you can have these conversations with us, but when I see what you're posting online, and what you're telling people, and what you're showing, yeah. I'm like, I don't know, dog, that AMG, like, that, that Mercedes, like, that's a forty dollars payment you could make, but your car payment is twelve hundred dollars. Like, yeah. bro, like where are your pri like priorities? You know. Yeah. So it's it's one of those things where it's like, what are our priorities? Our priorities is like like not everyone's priorities are to be successful later down the line. They're to be successful now or to look successful now. Um, so a lot of people think that they're playing the part, bro. But like, when when I think she's the only person who sees it. But like when you're in the life that we live. Yeah. Like, bro, we, we wake up, we go to work, and then when we get home with work, we go home and we work. Like, and people think, like, oh, yeah, I do that, too. I'm like, trust me, dog, come live with me. Like, like live with me, and yeah. you'll understand what that means. I think that's part of being an entrepreneur. People think being an entrepreneur, just having that title, say, oh, yeah, I did, I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. I got a business. I don't, I don't want to work a nine-to-five anymore. But it's like, bro, you're working nine-to-nine. Nine. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll cap on, it, on, on entrepreneurs, bro. I'll be straight up. 99% of all these motherfuckers are not entrepreneurs, bro. I'm not an entrepreneur. She's not an entrepreneur. We're small business owners. Entrepreneurs are people who solve big problems. We're not solving big problems yet. We may get to that point. Okay. But entrepreneurs are people who take life situations, the problems, and they solve them. For other people, they provide value for millions, hundreds of thousands of people, tens of thousands of people. We're just small business owners. So you think that just, that just goes back to, like, the platform they have? Right, like uh, I just think that people take entrepreneurship and they run with it because it sounds like a cool title for something that they think they're doing, but okay. they're really not. Like, on, like if if let's just say for example we own the gym and then we scaled it to a hundred different gyms and then we had clothing apparel and then we had all these like different ev avenues which we provided jobs for, provided new like products and services for people. That would be entrepreneurship. Yeah. Right now we're just a small business. Like, How many so employees we're small you guys have? Dude, her and I. 
And his mom when his mom helps. Yeah. Shout out to my mom. But yeah. Damn. Shout out to your mom, man. Was, yeah, facts. Got, got to. <laughs> got to give it up for, for the, the ones that, you know, I feel like my mom believed in us even at some point when we didn't even believe in ourselves. You know, from where we come from, where I come from. I mean, my dad was self-made from nine brothers, only business owner to ever do something. Still. So, but like I've, I've told my story too, like as much as he had a business, I felt like I just needed to find my own way. So instead of working for him outside of high school, I went to work at a phone company, sold phones for two years, got good money, faked it till I make it. Cause I, Which sometimes you have to do. Fuck. For real. I wish I, I, I regret it now, but it was part of the learning process. Cause yeah. Dude, I was driving a uh, Challenger V8, upgraded to a Scat Pack 392, and everybody's like, damn, bro, new car, new car. I'm like, yeah, bro, fucking pockets are broke as a motherfucker, yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. So when I, when I met my girlfriend, and for me, it was like, when you find the one, it's like, all right, you want to make sure you're good, and what you're doing with your life is going to benefit everybody. So I've never had a savings besides in my shoe, created a savings. Got pregnant, or like, yo, instead of living with my mom and living that, that uh, I still have money, have a kid, and still go back to my mom's and parents' house, I said, nope, I'm going to go to an apartment. I'm going to figure this shit out my own. If I failed at it, I failed at it, but, I mean, we ended up buying a house. So I think I we didn't good fail. For good for you. Yeah, thank you. Good I feel like we, we didn't fail at that point, but like I tell everybody, there's a lot of sacrifice. Like, I can't mm-hmm. go to the club anymore, and it's not even that I don't want to go, and that I can't. It's like, bro, like, it's not going to benefit me. I got three grand of rent to pay every month. And I think, I think people forget that, like, you have to have uh, every, every person and every relationship is different, right? So, like, Facts. for you, you guys, uh, you have a kid and you guys want to own a house. Like, for us, we, like, we have the money to buy a house, right? And we could go do that, but we're, like, we want to we wanna expand locations. We want to get bigger. And there, we have friends who are couples, and they actually enjoy, like, they enjoy going out. They enjoy drinking. They enjoy hanging out with their friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can't knock that, dude. Like, they, do, they put in the work, the nine to five hours, they work 40 hours a week, whatever it is. That's their goals. That's their aspirations. That's just different than what ours are, which are going to be different than yours and yours. Correct. You know, so it's, I think that people forget that, that like, we're not knocking that, but don't, don't act like you're doing something. And then like reality, like, bro, that's not true. Like, you know? Yeah. So I think that it, it goes back to, you just have to be hundred percent with people. So you, would you say you're just authentic on and off social media? So the people they meet on the social media, the David and the Veronica, like when they see you at the gym personally, you guys are those same people in and outside of the gym. Let me rephrase it. Are you the yeah. same people outside of the gym that when you guys are in, in the gym? Let's, let's ask Ariel. Is that true? I think so. Yeah. There you yeah. Go. I, I would say so. <laughs> yeah, I get, I get, I get, yeah, I get shit online because I post stuff that people, um, they don't want to see. And uh, I'm like, bro, it's how I am in person. Like, yeah. And I lose followers over it, then I gain followers over it. But I don't really care, dude, because it's just who I am. You can't please everybody. Yeah, you can't yeah. please everyone. I think... Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I feel like when you're trying to please everybody, like, you just get so lost and you just never win. Yeah. So it's like, if people are going to gravitate you, towards you, like, those are just the people that are meant to gravitate towards you. Yep. So we're talking about goals, aspirations. Like, what is your guys' purpose individually with... With being small business owners and being part of the gym, like, what is that? What is the end goal? Is there an end goal? I'd say right now there's no, like, end goal. I think we're just trying to just be the best that we can be, not only as, like, individuals, but I think just in the business aspect, you know, like, be the best gym. Just me be the best wife, be the best, like, person, you know, like, female, whatever it may be, like, just be the best versions of ourselves. Yeah, facts. That's a good one. I like that. What about you? It's the same thing. Dude. It's like, it's, it's, uh, taking a step. Like every time you make a decision, like, well, like last night we were, we got home and it was, we were just kind of kicking it there or whatever. And it was, okay, what can we do to be more productive in our day? Like mm. when you're at the gym, what, what can I do to improve the business? When you're at home, what can I do to, to improve myself? Like, so whether we're reading, like last night we went to the gym cause we were just sitting at home, like, let's go work out. So it's just, like she said, just trying to be a better version of ourselves. Like, once again, like, when someone wants to go out, it's like, okay, this decision I'm making, what value am I getting from this? Facts. Am I going to be going out to have a good time, to create memories, or am I just going out to drink and do nothing? Like, it's just the decision, every decision you make has either, it's either moving you towards your goal or from back from your goal. And that's, so. that's not to say that, like, we are homebodies completely and we don't like, like, 
we don't go out at all. Like, no, we love the occasional, like, going out, like, to um, the collection or whatever, going to have, like, um, dinner, just whatever, with friends, going bowling, whatever it is. Like, we do have those occasional moments because, again, like, p- to piggyback off of what he said, it's we want to cr- be able to create those memories, too, you know, yeah. with friends, with people who we want to have a good time with. Like, because it not only takes us out of the gym or out of just us two, it, we socialize. You know, as humans, we love to socialize, yeah. right? Like, that's yeah. a big thing for us. We love to... It's huge. Exactly. Building connections with, like, yeah. people that you probably never even expected and then all of a sudden, like, yeah. yo, like, you're part now of my circle. Exactly. Yeah. So it's still being able to do that. And that's why I, like, wanted to just mention, like, we're not just, like, homebodies. We're not boring as <laughs> we're hell. We're going to clear like. that up. We're going to clear that up. You're not I just would, homebodies. I would, say, I, was there, I, mean, I would say we're pretty... I mean, we're I would, pretty we're, fun we're, people. I mean, we're cool people. We so just don't fun, go out. What's a fun day in, in, your, in your life? We just don't go out. So, like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the, the difference is, man, is that like when we when we go out with friends, like when we have we had a couple friends over last night, and uh, they own a business, and and but the, the conversations we have are different, dude. Like they're not, it's not yeah. small talk. Yeah. Like we'll we'll sit there, we'll listen to a podcast, or or we'll we talk about the books that we read. Like we yeah. like I don't think like we were talking to uh, he was a manager at one of the stores that we go to, and um, we were just kind of going back and forth, and and he was like, damn, you give it a lot of free game. I'm like, bro, like. People don't get it. Like, people say they're in it for their homies, but I'm like, bro, like, if you're part of my circle, like, I'm going to make sure that every single thing that I've learned, I'm going to make sure I give that to you because I want to see you succeed. Like, I want to see everyone succeed. Like, we were talking to, uh, to someone the other day, and she was like, oh, it was yesterday, and she was like, man, I love talking to you because every time I talk to you, I feel like I learned something. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's because I just learned it, but I'm, I'm here to pass it on to you already yeah. because, like, I want to make sure that, like, I don't hold back from you being successful as well. So you feel like, giving that free game is going to come back to you and pay it back in a certain, in a different realm or a different way? No, I mean, I just, it's not at all. Like, I just... Just do it because just that's just do, who just, you are. Just be a good person. Like, yeah. you just, you have to, you have to align. Uh, we're big believers in law of, law of attraction, if you're familiar with that. Yeah. So we're big believers in law of attraction is putting yourself on a, on a playing field that is positive, that is uh, giving back to other people without any expectation of giving it back mm-hmm. in return. Facts. Like, the person that we gave to yesterday... There is probably no way she could give back as value. Like there, there's, there's probably nothing she could have done. But I know that if I wouldn't have, like in my mind, I was like, oh man, I could tell her this right now. Yeah. But like if I would have held back from that for whatever little reason in my mind, I was thinking about being like a bad person, not giving her that value. Like that is law of attraction, putting myself in a place where it's like now I'm telling the universe that I don't want to help other people. Like that I don't want good things to happen. Yeah. So I'm like, I need to tell her this good thing because some way, shape, or form. If we ever end up in a situation, the universe will give that back to us. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you put yourself yeah. in a good position, good things will happen. It's just going back to, like, those people who always have things, bad things happen to them. Uh-huh. Because they put themselves in bad yeah. positions. They put themselves law of attraction, like, in yeah. bad situations. Uh, people that want to change will change. And, like, they, they'll look at everybody else, but the one person they never look at is the person standing in front of the mirror. So, like... We can give advice and we can throw game to everybody else. Like, your life, your life needs this, this, this. Yet, I'm not changing anything for myself. So, how do I want to progress in life? How do I want to be happy? You know, going back to that same thing that everybody says, oh, it is what it is and life is what it is. No, bro. If you want to be happy, you're going to be happy. It's just if the friend group that you're around isn't benefiting you and it's just keeping you away from what's meant to be for you, yeah. yo, like, you literally got to change it. and. Yeah. I had to do it in the last, like, two years. I had to cut off certain people, and yeah. it, it had to work out, and it worked out. Now it's like, bro, hopefully one day you're happy and your friends are cool, but, you know, yeah. I just can't have you around my circle anymore because you're going to come to the table, and when as soon as you leave, you're going to say whatever you It's like, no, I can't have that. Be honest. I think, I think people f- confuse the people that you're around with with uh, money and success. I think people are like, oh, you you make more money than me now. You're more successful. Like, now you changed up. I'm like, no, bro. Like, I went out and I improved my life. I put the work in. We provide value to other people now. Like, in me taking my time away from my day that's helping my customers, helping my wife, helping my business is now going to be with you not improving any of those aspects. Like, it's not my fault that you decided to take your time to do nothing. Yeah. So, like, it's not that, like, we aren't cool anymore. It's just that the life that you're living is just not providing value anymore. And so like now the friends groups that I have, 
like the friends that we have, they're not millionaires, you know, they're not fucking, they don't drive Rolls Royces, and, like, no, but like, they're taking the time in their day to improve their businesses, to improve their lives, and those are the people that I want to surround myself with, because I know at the end of the day, those people are always going to try to provide the most amount of value for themselves and for us, that's and that's, because I want to feel like when I'm giving value to somebody, that they are in a good enough place, or in a good enough mindset to give value to us in the case that ever happens, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's, that's what it is. It's not about money. It's not about success. It's just being surrounded by people who care about value. That's a difference. That's a big difference. Andy Frizzell with value exchange, dude. That's huge. He just, he just started talking about that value exchange. It's like you cannot talk to someone there's no value exchange. Like in some way, shape, or form, there has to be some exchange. In, it's in a relationship, husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Like if she was identical to me in a woman, like in a woman form, like, like how I am, there would be no value exchange we, because we don't, we we don't compliment each other. It wouldn't work. So you guys are different? You probably, we probably would have thrown hands already if she was like me, like, <laughs> like, because because we would just butt heads all the time. Now, don't get me wrong, like every relationship we butt heads, but like there's a value yeah. exchange, you know. She helps me, um, like stay centered because I like have ADHD and I want to fucking do a bunch of different things. And she's like, dude, focus on one thing. What the fuck's wrong with you? Like, I'm like relax and, a little bit. And the same thing with me, with her is that she's like a little bit more timid, and I force her to make like those leadership decisions. Mm -hmm. So like, there's value exchange there in a relationship. Yeah. Um, and it just goes with your friends, with your business, with everything, man. It's just value exchange. So when you guys get mad at each other, do you walk away or you work it out? Oh, right no, we work that shit out uh, ASAP. 100%. Like, lock, lock yourself in the room and we get Q and A questions. It's going to get figured out. Yeah, we get like, Q&A questions all the time on our personal and our business pages. How do you create a successful business and relationship, anything like that? And our number one thing is, is uh, communication. I feel like a lot of people get so surprised when we say, oh, we've been, like, April's going to be 10 years that we're together. So when they say, oh, you've never broken up once. We've never. Like, if we're never supposed been, to. We've never like even come to a fight. It's normal. It's normal. It, you know? it, it, do it, be, like, be. It's like I've been with my boyfriend for five years. We broke, about, we broke up about four times, but we found our way back to each other. Exactly. <laughs> Good like, luck in no. 10 years, girl. Like, <laughs> Good luck. That's not, Good luck, that's, dude. That's not the normal. That's not how it, like, a relationship works, yeah. you know? Like, so since the beginning, our, our biggest thing was communication. And so there will be times where we, like, get into, like, not a super heated argument. Like, we haven't really had any of those. But if we do, it, like, it's a heated discussion. That's probably something stupid. Like, it's like, no, okay. Like, we're both quiet for a little bit, but it's like, okay. Let's figure this out because you're not leaving the room. I'm not leaving the room. You're not going to give me the silent treatment. I'm not going to give you the silent treatment. We're like, we're going to figure this out because more than likely, it's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Go live? In a little bit. I don't know. Still getting used to it. <laughs> so we ended really quick on when you guys have an issue, you guys work it out. Mm -hmm. Right? So giving the gem of keeping the love alive while being in business. How does that work with you guys? Start with that one. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I think that, uh, that's a, that's a difficult question, dude. Hell yeah. I, I think, uh, I think that it goes back to, uh, I hate to keep saying it, but boundaries, dude. She's like, when she's at the gym, she has her shift. She's like, dude, go the fuck home. Like yeah. leave. And then when I'm there, it's the same thing. Like, Hey, you got to go home now. Like, you know, so it creates that separation. Um, but it has to, it's just communication, bro. Like communication triumphs everything in so a relationship. Is there like a, I miss you along those ways? So to touch on that, because <laughs> he just brought up a good point. Um, yeah. So when the schedules got introduced, I told him the main reason, or one of the main reasons why, um, like after for the first day of it, like working out, um, was that I was at home in the afternoon and he wasn't home yet because the gym wasn't closed. Well, when he got home, I was like, hey, like, you know, because I was like, oh, I missed you, you know, like, so it's, it's that separation that allows you to miss the other person because you haven't been with them, even if it was just for a few hours, like, it was yeah. like, oh, okay, like, cool, but I got my time, like, hey, I missed you, like, it just kind of, like, re, how would you say it, like, regrew that, in a sense, because it was like, oh, it's not like, oh, I'm, I see you every day, like, I see you all the time, oh, like, you know, you don't get tired of it. We, we do overlap our schedules a lot, like, it, yeah. it happens, because there's some things, like, the squat racks, like, we both needed to be there all day long to get them done, like, you know? I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. I, we were there from 6 a.m. To, to almost midnight every day for, like, like almost a whole week trying to get them done, you know? And so, those do overlap, but having the boundaries, and then I think where people go wrong, dude, it happens in family businesses all the time, is that people... They get, um, uh, they get the longevity of someone being there and they get the seniority of being a family member mixed up with business. Mm. So like a lot of people have a really hard time separating yeah. family 
or relationships from being in a business, which happens to do with boundaries again. Okay. Like when I'm there, I tell her like, hey, what the fuck did you do today? Like, how did you improve the business yeah. in some way, shape or form? Because at the end of the day, like I hired you as an employee. I like, dude, there was a, there was a time when we, she was transitioning over. We didn't know if she was fully going to be an employee yet. And I told her like, like, no, like no cap, dude. Like you need to tell me, are you down to be an employee? Because I need you to fucking work. Cause if not, I'm gonna go hire somebody else. Like I need yeah. to know so if you're going to be down for this. Was that a challenge? It was, um, especially because all my, like what I had knew from working, which is working with kids. Yeah. So working with kids, it's like totally different from working now with like adults that are older than me. And now like they're looking up to me because it's our business, you know? But was it hard because instead of, uh, working with your husband or being be nice to him like now you're working for the business instead of like hey this is my husband i'm cool i gotta i gotta oh, this no. is a slap on the hand no 100 you know I mean? it, it's a challenge because then like now i have in my head so when he so i think to myself when he comes in what am i going to tell him that i did today to help improve the business yeah Max. yeah 100 percent, dude so and, she, and she did she killed like dude like the first week and a half two weeks she like had like little cute, cute posters posted up like above the water fountain like leave us a review like she was improving the business dude like the whole front desk she designed like we got a new front desk made yeah. so uh and then you have to it's just if she was a regular employee you have to take those things and you have to uh be a leader and reward show that you're appreciating that so i was like hey like this weekend there's a new drop for this apparel company i'm like dude take the company card buy whatever you want from it like because yeah. i appreciate the value you've already provided for our business and so that's another leadership thing is like as an owner of a business and an employee of a business, you need to show like, once again, this isn't just a relationship. Like this is a boss or not a boss, a leader to an employee or a leader to a team member rewarding you for the things you've done for the business. Yeah. You know, like if it was, if it was like a, Hey honey, happy birthday or happy Valentine's you No, know, like this was like a, aside from a relationship, like yeah. a strictly business thing, this is basically a bonus I'm giving you. Yeah, because like you, you provided value for our business. You didn't depend on a certain holiday or event to be like, oh, well, now I got to get you a gift. Exactly. Because exactly. like you worked your ass off. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking dope. And yeah. I didn't expect it. And, and, and she didn't, she didn't, like, I didn't tell her to do those things. Yeah. Like, I didn't tell her to make the membership resource board. I didn't tell her to go paint this or to go do this to, to, to maintenance this thing or to make a front. She just she did it by did herself. It herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Employee of the month. Facts. <laughs> one of one employee. <laughs> Let's go every so, month. <laughs> go on the live. So should we have like a, an employee of the month? Like board right there? Like this month, employee of the month. There you go. She's, it, she's, it's she's it's gonna either get me, it. Or, me or Gracie the dog. Yeah, you know? Gracie so, the dog. You know? she's, yeah. she's badass. Because <laughs> she, she brings in members too. Dude, she, we've had members that have, we have people come in and they're like, uh, I want to sign up today, but only if Gracie's there. And I'm like, like, like for no real? Joke. Like for real? Like the Wait. dog? And she's like, yeah, if, unless Gracie's there, I don't want to sign up. Was, like, that, yeah. was that Ariel? No. <laughs> My followers love Gracie more than love anyway. Everyone loves Gracie. It was all about Gracie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. Now getting into a little bit more. Again, this is now transitioning from business to, to just relationships. You two, so you you can invite us on on live if you want to House of Gains, and I'll and I'll do like one of those shared lives. No, it's 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 on TikTok. TikTok. Oh, it's on TikTok. Oh man, I would invite Ariel, but she won't she won't say yes ah. to it. <laughs> we gotta we gotta uh, submit like a whole request form. Hey, it's a contract, everything. bro. It is. It's a contract. Yeah. So if we don't, I got you, Ariel. Don't worry. So. They say, and we're going to get a little bit more into it, but they say for relationships, keeping the sex mm -hmm. is important to keep a happy relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, reason why I'm bringing that into this is because for relationships, one of, the, one of the things that I think ends up happening throughout that is because people lose the, how do I say it? People lose the attraction to the partner. Oh, like, fuck, like, I don't get ready anymore. Stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. bro, like. She went from being ready 24-7 to not even getting up and doing her hair. Like, so for you guys, again, because you're That's business owners, Good. how does that, like, how do you guys do that for yourselves? Like, like how, like, fuck, you look good today when you wake up. Like, shit like that, you know what I mean? So giving that gem to, to coming up business owners and couples that are shit and work together. Yeah. Drop it, drop it, yeah, drop it. Let's see what um, you got. I think it about, it's it's the person, right? So I think for me, for example, because I mean we're talking, so let me just put yes, me at, please. Put, let me put me out there as an example. Um, me, how do I feel as a person, right? How do I feel? How confident do I feel as um, you know going into the gym? I don't want to go into the gym um, 
with my hair looking like crazy. It's like how I want to be, how I want my appearance to look, right? Right. So same thing for my significant other um, is how do I want or how did we get together? What did I look like? Do I still look like that now? Mm -hmm. Now, is it because one, I got lazy and I got comfortable or is it two, because I want to continue to still look good, yeah. right? So it's not say to say that I go to the gym like wearing boots or heels or, you know, getting all yeah. dressed up like, okay, no, I'm wearing gym attire, but not just because it's mm -hmm. easy, but because one is the gym, right? So it's like what I'm supposed to wear, so, so to speak, not that there's a right. dress code, but, you know, but there are some days where I do go to the gym in jeans and like a nice like um, jacket or something or like my hair is done a little bit more than other days, but, yeah. you know, it's like a standard, right? So I like to look things at what what is expected of me so kind of of it's context right like, what's like, the context context what's of the context at? of stuff but also how do i want my partner to still see me right and it, i i don't know i just feel like it just goes back to confidence like do i know my partner will still love me if i'm in sweats and a t-shirt do i know my partner still love me if i'm in jeans and a low low blouse you know it's stuff like that yeah. it's but but i think uh to piggyback on that like i, I think that there's um there's a comfortability that happens with relationships where people get very comfortable. Correct. Um, and it goes back to, uh, it, it goes back to value exchange. Again, it's, we had a question on our Q&A, was it two weeks ago? And someone said, hey, like, this is, you know, if you don't want to answer this, it's okay, but do you feel your partner should be fit in a relationship? Oh, yeah. And I was like, I might get some fucking slack for this, but I'm gonna be straight up, I think she should. Like, I think she should be fit. I think I should be fit. And we've made the agreement early in a relationship, probably like in high school, where I was like, hey, if I get overweight, like, in a bad way, if it's not bulking season, like, if I'm actually getting overweight, you need to tell me straight up, like, babe, like, you're getting unhealthy. Like, you, because at the end of the day, like, I, and I said in our Q&A, is that if your partner does not have aspirations and goals to be fit and to provide value for you in a relationship, the relationship is probably not going to work. You want to you understand, know? you want to understand your partner's wants. Yeah. And that's in all aspects. What do they that's, want you to look like? You know, what do you want to look like? What, what are their wants sexually? What are their wants, like... Physically, like yeah. emotionally, like how can you meet that? How can each other yeah. meet that? So you guys like are really all on knowing, the same page. like really knowing the details, right? Like exactly. instead of, I mean, being very blunt, but instead of like for the guy getting his fix and it's like, all right, how can I make you or make you feel good? How can dude, I hundred percent, dude? Time? And I think that's where like uh, one of again my favorite artist Kevin Gates, he says it himself. Like, and I first time I ever heard it, but he was like. I ple I'm, I come to please my partner. Yeah. And going through the whole, like, obviously thinking about everything else, like, fuck, bro. Like, honestly, we as guys, we just want to get the fix. You leave there and like, yep, I'm good. But in yeah. reality, it's like when you're with somebody and you say you love that person, it's like, how do you make them happy? Do you please them in, in every single in aspect? Aspect, yep. You know what I mean? What are you missing? Are you missing in something? If she's not happy, all right, what are, what are you doing? And it's like, Ali said, if you have great sex, you're a happy life. It's In, true. I, I, that, goes right? off, that's, that goes off the first, the first 30 minutes of the, of the conversation. I right? had said that um, people get lost in this, like, love yourself mentality. Yeah. And it's a, that's a very soft mentality. It's like, a, oh, well, love yourself. Like, be comfortable in your skin. Like, you can totally be comfortable in your skin. Yeah. Um, and she can be comfortable, and I want her to be comfortable in her skin. But loving yourself and being comfortable doesn't always align with what you need in a relationship. Like, you know, like, it, it, and when I say that, what that means is that I love her no matter what. Yeah. But if her or I get to a point where we become unhealthy, it's like, dude, it goes back to, to humans that have been around for, for millions of years. It's like, dude... We're going to pick the partner that we feel best is going to provide for our family. It's going to provide for whether it's financially, sexually, uh, kids, whatever it is, like for my business. Yeah. Like I need to make sure that our that we feel that the other partner is um, as best prepared to provide those things for each other. Yeah. So like it, it, it goes again, to like I want her to love herself and she wants me to love myself. Right. But if I get to the point where I start using that as an excuse People use that as an excuse to be lazy and to and to be happy. Yeah. But in reality, man, like it's that's not very fulfilling. Like and it, and to go back to like the confidence is that I'm confident enough that I can please him if I'm in sweats. I'm confident enough I can please him the same way if I was in jeans. Exactly. Facts. Yeah. You know. Drop the mic. Just saying. <laughs> Just yeah. Saying. Yeah. So now taking it back to. Like, say, high school. I want to end this podcast. Great podcast, by the way, to be honest. You guys. Thank you. I love it. You guys dropped some fucking gems. 
<laughs> just let us know when you want us back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you said earlier you guys are going to start your own podcast. Um, that's a goal. That's down the line. Yeah, it's down the line. Hopefully when we get expanded. That's, that's one We're of, trying his, to buy that's a big one of his ideas. I say, okay, one thing at a time, babe. Yeah. <laughs> well, we we, we have to, to get a bigger building first. So, yeah. So how, do you, how are you going to attain that? Like, how do you, let me rephrase it, giving the best advice to keeping a balance. You know how you said earlier that you have to check him so he doesn't jump into 10 other things at one time. So where is the balance individually to where you're building, you're building yourself, but also helping your partner and or marriage? I think you just have to look at it, look at it at a uh, realistic, like, is, is that realistic? Like, is that something that makes sense like yeah. you know do, is it is it attainable L- logical it, versus emotional exactly yeah it's the same thing yeah like without without saying what he's been saying this whole time but you know <laughs> it's exactly what it is you know I, is it, it a fits. realistic goal is it attainable is it logical you know does it does it meet where it's supposed to you know does it make sense for you to go open up a fast food restaurant when you own a gym like no it doesn't make any sense like yeah. focus on what you're good at like and let's build what we're building some people yeah. are like oh like do you ever plan on like getting into supplements we're like no we're not touching that because that's not what we're here for yeah you know? i feel like once somebody has a business and a successful business as you guys are going everybody has an idea that they want to just yo bro you should do this mm-hmm. like we see like we could throw in like uh, bradley martin's gym has his own platform has his own social media obviously big but we want like people will come and be like yo you should do this because they're doing it i think we, t- we have this conversation dude all the time because we see s- we see it happen so much yeah. Is that the difference with these people who like Bradley? Let's just take him for example, right? You have to build the demand for something, or there has to be a space open for it. Like right now, everyone is um, everyone's doing apparel companies. Like everyone's doing apparel, um, and we have friends who have been and who've been doing apparel for two years. We have friends who just started apparel in the last month, right? Um, and and they have to build a demand for something, right? right? So like you you don't we don't we wouldn't just go out there and start a supplement company. There's no demand for it. Bradley Martin. He built his demand on his followers, his subscribers, until he noticed, okay, there's a demand for this in my segment, so I'm going to do that. Yeah. And so it would be the best, the best, one of the best advice for a business is the best way to make money is by making more money. So what that means is like what you're good at, just keep doing what you're really good yeah. at. Yeah. And then once there's demand for something else, like we never ever thought about having a podcast until we had dozens and dozens and dozens of members saying, hey, you should do a fucking podcast. Yeah. Like we never made apparel until they were like, yo, we really want to buy some apparel. Yeah. But if you, if you go and do something before there's a demand for it, then you see it as a failure. But no, in reality, it, it just it, it just wasn't the right time. You yeah. didn't build enough demand for that Especially thing. Especially, like, when, how you said, we're, you're building the demand. Like, when you get to a certain level, like, people just want to own something that's going to be in relation to you. Like, yo, I, the hat that you guys have, yo, I want that hat. Like, I want to be a part of that team. I want to feel like it's a family same thing like with Ariel, with her her whole brand and everything. Why do people have those? Because, dude, like, she wears that. I want to be a part of that. I want to feel like I'm a part of it. Mm-hmm. Same thing with any other pair, like Bradley Martin, the Nelk Boys, all them. Why do we want Happy Dads? Oh, fuck, the Nelk Boys are fucking pounding the Happy Dads. Yeah. Throwing, I want to be a part of it. I want to feel like I'm, yo, like, I'm a part of them, like. Good. But, and there's a demand for that. Like if, if like take Ariel, for example, if she would have partnered up with someone at 100 followers or even 500 followers, there wouldn't it, there was not a demand to, to care about what she wears and what she cared. But now she has a following where it's like, hey, we want to know what the fuck you're doing. Like, where the fuck we want to align with what yeah. you're aligning. Yeah. And so it's the same thing with us. It's like we our goals, like our goals and aspirations, like we have a lot of goals to do these things. But it's like at this current moment, like we can build towards those things. But is there a demand for doing that right now? Yeah. Like is there is there a demand to create an apparel company? Is there a, a demand to do a supplement? Like, there's not. So let's not do that. Let's focus on our business, grow our business until there's a demand. We see there's an open space for that. So that's, yeah. that's really big. Facts. So, again, to end this on a great one, David, what would be the best advice you would have gave a 15-year-old you? Oh, man. Uh, don't look at her. You, bro. I you. don't know, <laughs> man. The, <laughs> the, best, the, the best advice I could give me... Um, Young you, bro. Young entrepreneur you. Young hardworking gems. Dude, there's, there's. I think that uh, I. This is gonna be so, so uh, count. Like I don't wanna say counter. That's not the right word, but so different than what most people say. It's most people be like, hey man, just, just keep working, keep working. Yeah, that's that's pretty standard. But it's um, 
everything that people try to tell you to avoid, don't avoid it. Like, don't avoid feeling sad. Like, don't avoid the hard work. Don't avoid feeling depressed because those emotions, those situations that you're, you're in and you thrive through, yeah. like, like, that makes me, like, when we had 80 members, when we had 50 members, when we had 25 members, when we had a grand opening and there was only 10 members who signed up that day, like, having to deal with those emotions, that depression, like, made me un, like made me happy that we have you know almost a thousand members we have 800 members whatever it is like yeah. it made it makes you appreciate the process so much more mm -hmm. so it's like bro like this shit's gonna take a really long time just fucking deal with it like yeah. you have to deal with it yo you gotta give up for that one <laughs> you, <laughs> you, got, you, you have got to deal to, with it that was, that was good now for you a 15 year old you what's the best advice you can give her um to piggyback off of kind of what he said, but in my perspective is that if I didn't go through the things that I went through when I was 15, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. Damn. Mm -hmm. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I didn't have the family problems, it's not like I'm, I can't tell myself, you know, don't, you, you know, just go away from the family. Like, just they, like what he said, just avoid it. Just, you know, don't do this and don't do that. And don't, no, if I didn't do those things, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. I wouldn't have learned what I learned. I wouldn't have set the boundaries I set now. I, w you know, you, it's all life experience. There's no do-overs and you just have to just now just ride with it and just continue, just build, build, build. Oh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. So what, what's, uh, to give your followers that I hope watch this and want to know a little bit more about you guys, what would best word or phrase that describes House of Gains? Uh, what's the best word? That's, that's hard, man, because it's, it's kind of like uh, when someone asks you to, to name your best quality or character trait, mm -hmm. and it's like, but there's not just one. So if I come up to you randomly and be like, bro, like, how do you describe House of Gains? Different. Just different. It's just different, dude. It's different. You got to be there to to witness it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, you, you, you can't tell you how many times like you just got to go there and people are like, damn, this is different. Yes, sir. Yep. Damn. Honestly, <laughs> I think we're this is gonna be the the longest reigning podcast we have done to this day. First trio of the of the podcast since since we started. So, yo, I want to appreciate you guys and thank you guys really for coming. All this way, right? Oxnard, right? Yeah. All this way. Thank you for having us, man. Yeah. Nah, man. Honestly, I got to no, give it up fun. to you guys. This is fun. <laughs> Again, the best, most organic, most authentic podcast out here at Toast Light Podcast. So whatever you guys got to drink, you know, got to give it a toast. toast. A toast. toast. Con la agua. We got some agua. Yeah. There it is. A toast to life. Appreciate everybody. Stay tuned. Let's go.